another fabulous afternoon in the Peak District. Cloud, bit of wind, and that fine rain, you know, the one that gets you wet. It's a slightly different environment to the norm. Not got any views yet. So I don't know about you, but these are the kind of days that I sometimes just write them off. I look out the window, see clouds, it's windy. I decide to sit back down on the sofa and think, I'll go another day when the weather's nicer. Quite easy to get into the habit of staring at that flashing box. I should be getting out exploring. Problem is, I'm not the kind of person that plans a great deal and I leave everything to the last minute. I've got no idea what we're having for tea tonight, never mind where I'm going camping next week. The views are starting to open up a little bit now. See that rain cloud though? So I've hiked and camped quite a lot of places in the Peak District and the Lake District, but I've never been one for ticking them off. Uh, Andy, for example, he's done all of the Waymites. I've camped with Russ Morehouse, who's camped on all of the Waymites. But that's never bothered me. Never been one to <laughs> say I've done that. But something's got to change a little bit. I need something that drives me a little more to get out of the door. So in the center there, I think that's my first box ticking exercise. So I didn't particularly want to do the Wainwrights because it's a three hour drive at least each way. And there's plenty of places on my doorstep where you can complete challenges like that. I don't like the rain either. It's trucking it down now, perfect. So we've reached Stanage Pole, and this is going to be my first Ethel. No, not the old lady off EastEnders with the pug. The Ethels are named after Ethel Haythornthwaite, who pioneered to make the Peak District the first national park in the UK. That was all the way back in 1951. So to bag an Ethel, <laughs> you have to give it a tap. Apparently, anyway. So like a lot of other people, I've been here before. I've not engraved my name in stone, though. But last time I never gave it a tap. I wasn't ticking a box. But now my first one's done. Right, so there's an app called Ethel Ready. So there's 95 ethels in all, um, and they're spread all the way across the Peak District. They're all over 400 meters high, I believe. And I'm just gonna tick my first one off. Oh, Pizza Hut. <laughs> Here we go. Stanage pole. Tick. First one done. I'm in the 1% club. So I chose Danish Pole because it's the closest as the crow flies to home. <laughs> Look at the views. See, normally I'd write this day off and need something like this to, to motivate me to say, next Tuesday, I'm gonna bag a couple of Ethels. Anyway, back to it. I'm gonna do two today, Stanish Pole and High Neb which is a little bit further along on Stanage Edge. Pretty easy going route. Park down at Red Myers Reservoir. It's about a five mile round trip, which is quite steady. And it gets you out of the house, I suppose, doesn't it? And a few nice views. Although the wind's picking up quite a bit.
I've dropped down onto the edge path. Windier, but the views are better. Hold on to your hat, weather. <laughs> Hey! Stanley Judge is pretty spectacular. Cracking way to start this challenge. There we go. I've done two Ethels in one day. Although I might word it differently. I'm going to tell Joe when I get home. Let's get out of this wind a minute. I needed that. Joe's right. <laughs> Sometimes you, you need to put plans in place. So this whole thing, the idea of the Ethels came about because me and Joe want something to do as well. And we're going to be doing the Peak District Triggs. This is actually one of them, so gonna have to come back here again and give it another tap. So I'm gonna be doing the ethels because they're a bit hillier. Um, although some of the trig point ones, the Peak District Trig Challenge, I think there's 88 of those, and there's 35 of the trigs and the ethels that overlap. So I'm gonna get two challenges done in one. But now I've got a bit of a reason to get out on days like this and normally I'll be sat at home. See a few more of the apples from here. Look at the state of this. We get a bad rap for this lot. What's left of a shit tent strapped together with duct tape. Look at the state of them. Doesn't get much windier and exposed than Stanley Judge. Kind of left me a bag though. Can't imagine where the tent is by now. Pro action, not recommended. I do feel blessed having somewhere like this, literally on my back garden. Not everybody has access to national parks and hills and mountains, but there are walks and challenges that you can do no matter where you live, whether that be in the middle of the countryside or in a big city. There is a website, I forget the name of it, but I will leave it in the description. It just lists hundreds, thousands of walks that you can pick up across the UK. And you can filter them for different mileages as well. So if you want to do a really long distance walk over multiple days, or if you just want to do a five or 10 mile hike. Don't let where you live stop you from getting out and enjoying the outdoors. Oh, one last thing. If you're sat watching Pack Lunch with Steph or Tenable, turn it off now, get your hiking boots on and get outside. Go and do a bit of litter picking. You won't regret it. <laughs> 